Welcome participants to this MOOC course on climate change vulnerability and adaptation. I am Shahab Fazal, faculty in the Department of Geography at Aligarh Muslim University. In this, in this lecture, I would summarize the challenge of climate change, challenge and what is required as our response to this growing menace of the phenomena of climate change. I will try to explain the ARM of climate change. These three words, climate adaptation, A is for adaptation, R is for climate resilience, and M is for climate mitigation. So adaptation, resilience, and mitigations, they are everywhere. They are crucial to climate change discussions. But they can also be a bit of a jargon. So in this lecture of climate change, I would try to simplify climate adaptive resilience and mitigation strategies. What actually they mean? And why these terms are used frequently and commonly and even most widely? That I would try to discuss in this particular lecture. Now I'll give you a very common idea, crude idea to understand the adaptation mitigation term. Imagine you are on a boat in a sea and unfortunately it has a big leak. Water is pouring into the boat. You are under threat of being drowned. So you have to got to protect yourself. You need to respond to the situation. You need to act so that water stops gushing in, which might cause boat to sink. Now the first thing you might do is pick a bucket and start taking out water as it gushes in to the boat. This is your response. I would say this response is adaptation to the situation. So adaptation is measures that is to address the immediate effect. In this case, water in the boat. Now in this context of climate change, adaptation is the process of adjusting to actual or expected effects of climate change. That is what the adaptation, climate change adaptation. It's happening. So what we can do to live with it and minimize the negative impacts of climate change that are real, already happening, we have discussed at length. How we can prepare for the future. Now the examples can be societies, communities and people respond. For example, if the floods are coming, so the, they would build bonds, sea walls, etc. and other flood defenses. Another way can be like moving people and economy and economic activities away from the areas that are prone to flooding or planting trees in cities to reduce extreme heat, which is the cause of, uh, I would say in some way is uh, affecting the, uh, inducing the climate change. Or also setting up early warning system for say cyclones, switching to, to the drought resistant crops, protecting the livelihood, strengthening our basic infrastructure, electricity supply, roads and bridges with better materials and designs so that they can withstand the extreme weather events like storms. Again, this is how climate change is impacting us. It could also look like redesigning the communication system, business operations and governmental policies. This way we are making adapt adaptive measures to the climate change. I gave you the examples which are very diverse. But when the impact of climate change happens in, a dip in so many different ways, the adaptive measures are also very diverse. 
So this is what the climate change adaptation. Now if adaptation is about taking out water from our sinking boat, think of another term that is resilience. It is for recovering back. It is reinforcing the parts of the boat that haven't yet been breached or weakened because of the water. So that if when the water gushing in and hits those parts, the impact is reduced and we can recover faster. Now, this was the example of boat. In the context of climate change, these efforts for innovations in planning so that community can bounce back quickly from disruptions when they are hit. Resilience can be like mass flood insurance, allocating resources to disaster preparedness such as emergency response, response training, capacity building or stockpiling uh, essential supplies, establishing temporary shelters, building strong community networks that can provide assistance during and after the climate related events. Furthermore, diversifying the livelihoods to be less dependent on a single sector or activity which could be affected more by the climate change incidents. Protecting and restoring the natural ecosystem like forest, wetland etc that can provide natural buffers. To cut short the elaboration, I would say the climate resilience means better, more durable climate proof systems. This is the natural resilience to the climate change. So of course, adaptation and resilience need to go hand in hand with the mitigation to tackle the root cause of climate change that is our global heat trapping emissions. So continuing with our example of boat, if we want our boat to stop taking on more, uh, more water, sooner rather than later, we'll have to patch those bre breaches in the boat. Now in this context, climate change mitigation means reducing or slowing down the release of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. We can do this by shutting down coal and gas plants, replacing them with renewable energy sources like solar and wind power, being much more efficient with energy and use, uh, usage of, using of less oil, promoting public transportation, encouraging plantation of more trees to remove carbon from the air that we have discussed at length. All things, all these things we have talked earlier also in this discussion also. But there is an important nuance that I want to point out. The results and effects of mitigation take time to show. So even if we take very strong action to reduce emissions today, the greenhouse gases that are already in the atmosphere will continue to cause global warming for a very long period of time. And the phenomena of climate change would continue to impact us. That is why climate change adaptation and resilience are so vital. Here again, I would bring the reference of global divide between developed and developing nations, the global south. It actually explains why global south is impacted disproportionately. So climate change mitigation refers to efforts to reduce or prevent the emission of greenhouse gases aiming to limit the extent of future change. The key strategy includes, again, it might appear as repetition, but in the context of mitigation, climate change mitigation, I need to restate it again. The key strategy includes renewable energy, transitioning to solar, wind, hydro and, and geothermal energy sources, energy Im efficiency, improving the efficiency of building, transportation and industries, carbon pricing, implementing carbon taxes, we have talked about carbon trade, 
cap and trade system to incentivize emission reductions, reforestation and afforestation, planting tea, trees to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, sustainable agriculture, adopting farming practices that reduces the emissions. This would be part of climate change mitigation. In the context of climate change, adaptation which involves adjusting the, to the current and expected impacts of climate change to minimize the uh, harm which can be caused by climate change events. Here the key strategies include infrastructure upgradation, building resilient infrastructure to withstand extreme weather events, disaster preparedness, developing early warning system, emergency, res emer emergency response plans, management, implementing water management schemes like irrigation, water storage system to cope, co to cope with drought, coastal protection, restoring mangroves which can protect us from rising sea level, constructing sea walls, adjustment, economic act activity adjustment, especially the primary activity, agriculture, developing drought resistant crops and changing the planting seasons according to the shift in climate seasons. The third climate resilience. Here resilience encompasses the capacity to anticipate, prepare and respond and even recover from adverse climate impacts. That is part of climate re resilience. The key element can be the community engagement involving people in planning and decision making the local communities should be engaged in the planning ecosystem management protecting and restoring the natural systems that provide resilience such as wetlands and forest economic diversification for reducing the reliance on climate sensitive sectors by promote, promoting diverse economic activities education and awareness, capacity building, raising awareness and education people about climate impacts and resilience measures. And most importantly, adaptive governance, implementing flexible policies that can be adjusted as the condition changes. So these are all measures which we can think of in mitigating, adapting and resilience of, uh, to the climate change. If I, if I can connect the dots for climate change, I would say mitigation reduces the severity of climate change, making adaptation and resilience efforts more manageable. Adaptation ensures that societies can cope with the change that mitigation cannot prevent. Resilience enhances the overall capacity to thrive despite climate challenges by integrating both mitigation and adaptation efforts. And by focusing on these three pillars, the mitigation, adaptation and resilience, we can create a more sustainable and secure future for all. So now I stop here. I tried to highlight the net zero issue, why it is so essential to reach to that level and to reach that, how we can mitigate, adapt and become more resilient to the climate change phenomena. I try to highlight that. Hope you now understand the challenge of climate change before the humanity and also the possible remedies. Thanks for joining. Happy learning.